Hi there and welcome to John's Waters Joint. I want everyone to cast their minds back six or seven years now to a time when YouTube was full of two dive watches. You had the Citizen Promaster NY0040 and you had the Seiko SKX. Imagine that's them there. They're dueling away back and forth, side by side. Then all of a sudden, the SKX was no longer in the picture. It was discontinued. So that would mean that the Promaster was then the king of the divers. You following me here? It didn't happen that way. Why is it that the Orient Kamasu was installed as the king of the divers when this little guy was still here? Well, this little guy here, he's going to pick a fight. We'll get into it after this. Hi there and welcome back. All joking aside, there's going to be no uh, skullduggery going on. You can see here we have a Citizen, we have an Orient, and I'm a bit of a Seiko fanboy, so I got my old Seiko Lord Matic from 1974. So I like all watches if they're good watches. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the specifications of both watches very, very quickly, and then we'll get into it. Okay, so in this corner we have the Citizen Promaster NY0040, legendary diver, issued to the Marina Militari in 97, and it was used for many years, and it was famously tested down to 500 metres without failure. So if that's not kudos and gravitas, I don't know what is. Lovely little diver, worse smaller than its dimensions, and the dimensions are 42 millimetres in diameter, it wears more like a 40, it's just over 12 millimetres thick, it is 47 millimetres lug to lug, and because of this supplied uh, rubber strap here, it's just straight down from there. Lug width is a standard 20 millimetres. Weight is 94 grams supplied on this uh, strap. It's an isolated 200 metre diver. So this is a tool watch. This is what it's made for. It's made to take bumps. It has a mineral glass, and it's much better to have a mineral glass that'll take a bump and a scratch, rather than it's smashing on you and ruining the whole watch. This is a tool watch. Moving on to the specifications of the Orient Kamasu. So this is the Orient Kamasu Red. And uh, this watch is likewise, it's just under 42 millimetres, but it wears bigger because it's mostly faced with a small bezel on this one. But it wears bigger. It's 12.8 millimetres thick. It is 47 lug to lug, so very similar to the Promaster. But unlike it, it's 22 millimetres lug width. Weight on this one is 170 grams on this supplied uh, bracelet. This is a 200 meter diver, but it isn't ISO compliant. This is designed more like a sports watch. So this is more of a sports diver, and you can see that there's a lot of polishing going on for that. All right, so that's just to give you the specifications so you can compare the watches. Big differences, this one has a, a sapphire crystal rather than a mineral crystal, which means if you do smash it and it does break, you're likely going to take the face of the watch out. Both of these watches have in-house automatic movements, hand widening, hacking, Citizen has a Miyota 8204 movement, formerly the 8203, which is even more accurate. And we have the F6922 movement from Orient in the Orient Kamasu. So both in-house, so this should be interesting. Both 21 joules, both 21,600 beats per hour. So we're going to be a bit old school here. This is going to be an old format. 13 categories, 10 points for each category. You get a maximum of 10 points for a really good score. Zero points if it's not got a score at all. At the end of those 13 rounds, as it were, you'll have a winner. And that's it. No, it doesn't quite work that way. As we all know, there's strengths and weaknesses along the way. Take from it what you will, and you'll see what you think is watched for you at the end of this. This is just for a bit of fun. So anyway, let's get on with it. So the first thing up here is value for money. So when you look at these watches now, they both offer real bang for buck. The Promaster is now at £140 on Amazon. Now, I've seen spot deals like this before, but never quite this cheap. So this time last year, it was trading anywhere from £190 to £230, depending on supply. So that represents a really good value here, so it's good bang for buck. Kamasu is more expensive. It's around about £185 to £190. You have to remember, last year at this time, it was trading about £100 higher than that. So it's representing good value as well. And you remember, this has got a sapphire crystal too. So both of these watches represent really good value for money. And accordingly, I've given them a score that recommends it. So nine points each. Moving on to the next category, we've got design. So we'll have to really think of fitness of purpose. 
So, for example, ProMaster, tool watch, eyes are rated, tough, rugged, taking a lock, you won't break the glass. Simple as, does the job. Kamasu, slightly different, not as rugged, not as hard wearing. They both do their own thing very well. So accordingly, I've awarded them eight marks each. Again, nothing to call between them. Next, we look at build quality. Is there any difference between these two watches? No, I've had a really good close inspection of the faces. There's no dust, there's no particles in there, there's no fingerprints on the underside of the crystals. Uh, they've been machined well. I don't think I can say in between them there. Again, equal here, eight and eight. Still nothing between these guys. Round four and finishing. Is there anything we can nitpick at here? Yes, there is. So, for example, the Kamasu. It looks great, looks well finished, nicely polished, but it's just not done to the same standard as the ProMaster. If you look at the difference between the lugs and then onto the bracelet, and then from the bracelet to the side of the case, you've got all these transitions going on and it's just a bit messy. But not only that, you've got that lovely circular brushing on top, which I've not got a problem with, but they're trying to do a chamfered edge here and it kind of fails. It doesn't kind of do it properly before it goes on to that heavy polishing. So it's just a wee bit lacklustre there. But when you go on to the ProMaster, when you look at it really closely, it's really cool. So on the top here, on top of the lugs, You've got a circular brushing, it's done really well. Transitions down, and you can see where it transitions down there. So you've got that brushing all the way around. You've got a little lip there, and straight under the lip, it just goes into that polish. And when you see it in the side profile, it just means when you bang against something, it's just a tiny little area that's going to give you a scratch. So that's well designed. But then you look at the bezel, and it's a satinized finishing. So circular brushing, polishing, satinized finish and then aluminium insert it's excellent for the price it really is excellent so you have to give marks for that too and in this case it's nine for the citizen and eight for the orient for round five i've added accuracy i think it is essential it's always missing from these challenges orient this watch was a bit of a disappointment to me. Now, I've had the Mako 2 and the Ray 2, and I actually had the first Mako as well with the extra pusher. None of them get into single figures when it comes to the time variance. Very disappointing. This one hasn't changed. Plus 12, plus 13 seconds a day. NH35, I usually find her a bit better than that. So not the best for the Orient. When it comes to the Citizen, this is the new 8204 movement with a hacking movement in it. The tolerances have now opened out, believe it or not, so it means that citizens are saying this is not quite as accurate as the previous 8203 non-hacking movement, and it kind of bears itself out here. This one's plus seven seconds, but every other citizen pro master I've had, and I've had, I think this will be the seventh now, uh, there have always been single figures, but predominantly between two and five seconds fast per day. It's been a tremendously accurate movement before, but... The caveat is the hacking has done something to the movement, but it's still a better timekeeper than the Orient. So for that, two points. Two points of a difference there in accuracy, simply because it's quite a wide variance. So now you're going to ask yourself the question, well, you just done accuracy. What are you talking about movement? Well, just hear me out. The accuracy is one thing. The movement inside a watch isn't necessarily bad if it's not been regulated properly. Both the ProMaster and the Orient, very good movements, both in-house, very capable movements. However, Citizen are better at regulating their movements. Orient, not as much. That's the difference. So when it comes to movement, I can't really call between them. Eight points each. Now to another category you might think is a bit contentious. Well, no. Accuracy, movement and the use of the crown for adjusting your times, etc. How does the crown work? So I find that with the Citizen, I would say it's not refined. You get a nice pop, easy to use, but it's not as refined. Winding is easy. You can feel it. It's just a little bit unrefined. Popping it back in, no problem at all. And as for the Orient, it's difficult to get up because it's a tiny little crown and these crown guards get in the way, so it's quite diminutive. Could be bigger, nice pop, but when you try to wind this, oh my god. 
You can hear that on camera. It's dry, it's dry feeling. And then when you try to put the crown back in, it's kind of a little bit indistinct. It, yeah, so that's the difference. The Orient is dry and the Pro Master is just a bit unrefined. Both of them could do a lot better. So how have I scored them then? Well, seven points each. Now we're on to bezel operation, my favourite bit. This is a rudimentary diver. It's an ISO rated diver. It's fit for purpose. 60 click bezel. Precise. No back play. You know exactly where you're at. I love playing with this thing. It's like a fidget spinner. Really good. The Orient Kamasu here. Slightly different. Oh, yes. More Seiko-esque in its sound and its rotation. 120 clicks. Pleasure to use. And a better bezel. So it wins on this one. And I'm going to give that 9 as opposed to the ProMaster's 8. For versatility. I think we all know this is kind of a one-trick pony. You can dress it up with a Milanese if you got a blue dial one and make it look really nice for casual evenings out, that kind of thing. But it's a tool watch, so it's probably going to end up losing against the likes of the Kamasu, which is a sporty diver, something that's well-rounded. I gather, I go anywhere, do anything kind of watch. So again, I've scored this one accordingly. Seven for the Pro Master and nine. Yeah. Nine for the Orient. Right then, we're now on to water resistance, and this is quite an easy one on paper or just in general, simply because this is an isolated diver, so it has to jump through all the hoops, dot the I's, and cross the T's to get that certification, and that is a 10. There's no question about that. Is the Orient as good with a 200 meter water resistance? Of course it is, but not quite as good. Therefore, it's been scored 10 9 in favour of the Pro Master. I don't think there's any surprise there. Short and sweet. One thing that's good to know about watches is, uh, you know, how they fare over time. And when you get to feel a watch, use it every day, use it as a tool, you know what you're dealing with. I've had a few iterations of these and I've sold them on with nary a scratch. You know, they take an absolute pasting, these things. I've got no question about the durability with these. The movements are excellent and the aesthetic of it really works. It staves off damage and scratches. Great watch. Not so sure about the Kamasu. It's a nice looking watch. How long it will stay nice looking? That's the question mark. Because of the, the polished flanges here, the polished sides, it's going to pick up scratches. It's, it leaves a big question mark. I've got no question it will last the test of time, movement wise. Looks wise, I have my doubts and I've scored it accordingly. I've put nine for the Pro Master and eight for the Kamasu. Now this... This was the big thing that got me in these last videos. Every time it came to kudos, prestige or cachet for brand or double up the points or it mean the other watch would lose. I'm not going to do that here. If anybody wants to choose between Citizen and Orient for prestige at this end of the market, you're welcome to it. I can't tell the difference between them. As far as that's concerned, they have equal cachet. Eight points each. Well, my friends... Both these guys, they made it into the final round, sparring away against each other, and it's pretty close. But the warranty is something we have to breach here. For the Kamasu, Orient will only give you a one-year warranty. Now, it has to be from an authorised dealer. That's shockingly bad. Very poor. I would have expected more. For the ProMaster, top marks. Five-year manufacturer warranty outstanding they give that with their watches as long as you don't buy it in the grey market and it scores 10 to the ProMaster and 7 to the Orient which is about right so where does that leave us then at the end of all this it leaves us with scores of 130 of 110 for the ProMaster and 105 for the Kamasu so there was only 5 points in it and that was including that 3 point gap there just on the warranty and it shows just how close it was. But the one thing we haven't shown on here. Yeah, you've guessed it. We've got to go to the cupboard of doom for the loom test. Here we are in the cupboard of doom. And you'll see on the left hand side there we have the Kamasu. And in the same hand on the right hand side there we have the Promaster. At first you would say 
that there's not much between them, but just in terms of glow and overall area covered, the Promaster takes it. And I can testify to the fact that these bows last all night, however the Promaster is the better of the two. So, here is the wrist shot of the Promaster, as you can see on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist. Wears absolutely beautifully. And that strap is extremely comfortable. It moulds to your wrist. Believe me, after a couple of weeks, you won't even know you got the watch on. It's really nice. Lovely to wear. Sits perfectly on the wrist. And suits somebody down to 6 inches, wrist-wise. Great choice. Rugged watch. Lovely colours. And finally, here is the Kamasua Man. So it looks really good as well. More face, looks bigger, but sits on the, the wrist equally well. Six and three quarter inch wrist. Wears impeccably. Go anywhere, do anything, watch. A bit more dressy. Uh, you'd have to question whether it would actually take the punishment that the Pro Master would. But really, even though the Pro Master has taken it on points here today, uh, it's good that it scored the win technically. But either of these divers, they're fit for purpose. They're great for what they are. You've got to decide what kind of watch that you really like. So I'm going to leave it there just now. Nothing to lose with either of these watches. This is John from John's Watch Joint. Thank you very much for being here. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell. Help me out if you can. Grow this channel and get some more watches in. Thank you very much for being here. Ta-ra for now.